Thank you. In this age of internet startups, we expect the rapid development of new ideas into products, whether rapid success or failure. But some efforts, especially scientific research, have to take the long game, sometimes decades. To do this requires a willingness, a capacity, to do research you don't know will work, and may take a very long time to know that it will work. This requires not just the dedication of the researchers, but steady backing from the backers and a bit of luck. The LIGO project, which just announced the first discovery of gravitational waves ever this past year, is one such effort. For millennia, we've used light to observe the cosmos. Historically, to build an observatory, you came up with a design for a telescope and found some very rich person to pay for it, hopefully before you passed away. In the 19th century, the richest man in California was convinced to build the most powerful telescope of his age as his tomb, instead of building a very large pyramid in San Francisco. These days, most large telescopes are funded by governments. It makes them subject to the whims of public opinion and election cycles, but doesn't usually require you to bury someone under them. 40 to 50 years ago, astronomers had built telescopes that spanned the entire spectrum of electromagnetic radiation, from X-rays to visible light to infrared to radio waves, and they were making some great discoveries. But they were also finding out that most of the matter in the universe would never actually be visible in these telescopes. The long theorized black holes appeared to actually exist. The end state for very massive stars. These undergo a gravitational collapse so extreme that even light itself can never ever escape. Hence the name. They were also finding out that at the center of most galaxies, there is evidence that there was a very massive black hole with the mass of a million suns. Even more disturbingly, they were finding that most of the matter in the universe appeared to not be made up of atoms that make up stars and us. Instead, this dark matter could only be found indirectly by its gravitational pull on the stars that could be seen. But there was a possibility. Einstein had predicted that there was gravitational radiation. If very massive objects accelerate, such as a pair of black holes orbiting each other tightly, they will lose energy in gravitational waves. They will propagate away as ripples in the fabric of space-time at the speed of light. As these propagate through space, they squeeze it in one dimension while stretching it in the other. But even the most powerful sources of gravitational radiation and waves would only leave the faintest ripple when they got to the Earth. These ripples would be so small that it would be only one ten thousandth the diameter of a proton over a couple of kilometers. How would you ever detect that? Ray Weiss and others at MIT had an idea that a new instrument, the laser interferometer, could do the trick. Ray spent the entire summer doing all these calculations, figuring out how you would do it and what the query technologies were. Uh, that was after assigning as a problem set for his students. Um, he found that you would need a very large instrument with arms several kilometers long in an L shape, and you would need the largest vacuum system ever built. Funding for this crazy idea was, was difficult at first. The administration of the National Science Foundation were very intrigued, but only started things out with modest grants. They needed to prove that the critical technologies for this would actually work. They also brought in an industrialist to work with these desktop scientists to scale up their efforts to build such large facilities. By the late 1980s, plans for these laser interferometers were getting very serious. All the critical technologies had been proven, but 
The budget to build these facilities was $100 million. This dwarfed the existing budget for astronomy. How was this ever going to happen? Some luck helped. The two sites selected, down selected from a list of candidates, ended up in the districts of some key congressmen and senators who became very strong advocates for this proposed laser interferometer gravitational wave observatory, LIGO for short. They pay, passed laws creating a very a special pot of money for such major projects. The initial funding was finally secured. But this was a tough time for large science projects. Many of them were having their budgets slashed. The superconducting super collider in Texas was even canceled. The nascent LIGO project got some benefit from this. They got several managers experienced in large science projects. They also got a lot of surplus furniture. Now, any of these projects have to be arranged in stages. At each stage, you have to prove that you can meet the goals for that stage and complete them. This builds confidence in the backers and in the researchers that this will ever occur. The first goal for the LIGO Observatory is they had to construct and operate a small network of interferometers around the clock for two years, collect all the data and analyze it. And they did that. And they also managed to prove that the performance of their instrument was, met the goals that had been boldly predicted over 10 years before. LIGO also engaged the public. They created the Einstein at Home project, which let hundreds of thousands of ordinary people use the idle time in their computers to search for waves from wobbly pulsars. It also had a neat screensaver. But this effort let ordinary citizens of the public experience the joy and excitement of searching for things that had never, ever been seen. In all that time, though, LIGO wasn't that lucky. There were no surprise discoveries of gravitational waves from sources that were much closer than the astronomers expected. But they did secure funding for the next stage, advanced LIGO. Here, they took out all the innards the, and replaced the lasers, the optics, the seismic isolation systems with apparatus that could actually meet the performance to find the even weaker gravitational waves that were actually expected. In the, initi in the initial part of LIGO, the mirrors were simply hung from two wires. In advanced LIGO, there were four separate suspensions of these mirrors. The final one on very fragile but very strong silica glass fibers. This was all to isolate these mirrors from all external vibrations. The vibrations from the ripples of gravitational waves passing through them. In a sense, they were building the quietest rooms ever. To hear the smallest pin drop imaginable. By 2015, they had gotten all these parts assembled and new interferometers, got them all working stably. And then luck came in again, because just as they're starting their search in earnest for gravitational waves, they got the surprise of their lifetimes. A big signal in both observatories. It was almost too good. They had all expected that it would be a very subtle signal that would take weeks and weeks of computer processing to find. But this one was so large you could actually see it in the data itself. Now when they, uh, the data itself. Now when they analyzed it, they found it was from a pair of black holes. These black holes were th each 30 times the mass of the sun. 1.3 billion years ago, they had merged violently, so violently that three suns worth of mass were converted immediately into just into gravitational waves, no light at all. Truly amazing. But what was very frustrating to these scientists was they couldn't tell anyone. 
Why? Because they had to absolutely make sure there was no other cause, that there was no other little signal or little problem with the apparatus. You have to remember, they are trying to convince everyone that they had seen something, gravitational waves, no one else had ever seen from a pair of massive black holes that no other telescope could ever see. They had to be really, really sure. And they were. And they finally announced it. Now, during that observing, they actually saw a couple more such binary black holes. They greatly increased the set that were known at all. And these were much more massive than had been found before. This discovery may also answer that dark matter I talked about before. For over 20 years, physicists have been searching for some exotic particle that makes up this dark matter. But they found nothing. But now some theorize that this dark matter is actually maybe unseen black holes created at the Big Bang. We will see. We hope for some great discoveries. Now, because gravitational waves go through everything, they're part of the fabric of space-time, you can't focus them like you can light in a telescope. You can only use timing, just like your ears, to figure out where they're coming from out there. So you need a network. Luckily, the network is growing bigger. This year, an interferometer in Italy will be joining the system. The Japanese are building one inside a mountain to better shield it from vibrations. Within the next decade, we expect another LIGO instrument to be built in India. We don't know what great discoveries we're going to get with this system. This is not the only long-term effort in the field. The LISA project proposes to build a laser interferometer in space. This interferometer would actually be sensitive to gravitational waves from sources much fainter but much closer to us, some in our own galaxy, some we even know about already. Um, this past March, they launched a satellite out beyond the Earth that proves some of the critical technologies they need to build this interferometer. Having been active for already 20 years, and it's probably going to take another 10, 20 years more, and with satellites that will be a mere 1 million kilometers apart, they're a very long game indeed. Thank you.